Yo, what's up guys, Felix from John Lifestyle. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be sitting down with John Wilker. John Wilker is the palette guy on YouTube. He's also the creator of The Simplest Biz. I've done a variety amount of videos with him over the past two years on my channel. And the first video we actually did together was just like this one where we did an interview, but that was actually pre-COVID. So I decided to bring him back on the channel. Now that COVID has been around for the past two years, kind of figure out how it's affected the business, if it has at all. Also, I got the idea to do this video as I just spoke to one of my students who is flipping medical commodities or actually just started flipping medical commodities because he's mm -hmm. built up a successful stream of income, making around three to four K per week from the pallet business. And then actually just to show you guys, and then I'll pass the mic to uh, John. It says right here, he texted me a picture. He made like 4250 this week. So John, for anybody that doesn't know you, hasn't seen the videos we've done together, can you tell them who you are, where you're from, and what do you actually do? Hey, everybody. And Felix, thanks for having me on. You know, we've done quite a few of these. I've gotten to know you well, so I'm glad I'm, glad I'm here. But my name's John Wilker. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, but I've just recently moved back in May down toward Mobile, Alabama. We'll get into that scenario of how that if, uh, works for my business later on. But... Um, were you asking me how, how I got this all started and all? Is, is that what your question was, yeah, Felix? Yeah, but I mean, that and plus for anybody who doesn't know, you know, what the pallet business is and, you know, what everything entails. Sure. And we'll go into more as we talk in this video. But, you know, what is it that, what is the pallet business for anybody that has no idea what it is? Understood. Let's just shrink it down to its simplicity. There's two sides of a pallet business. One is acquiring the accounts and how to serve the businesses the supplier and the buyer, right? We have suppliers, businesses that are suppliers of pallets that give them to us for free. And then we have businesses right down the road that are buyers of pallets that need them on a consistent weekly basis and large quantities on a weekly consistent basis. So the model is joining these two together, meeting, being the middleman. So there's that aspect of it the acquiring of those accounts and all that goes in to serve these two sides of the equation, including yourself, which makes a three-legged stool to where it's a win-win-win, right? Making sure that you're getting exclusivity for that supply where you don't have to store it, you don't need any employees, and you don't need uh, insurance or warehouse or anything. That supplier is your warehouse, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm simply driving into a business once I have acquired this and set this up driving in the forklift drivers are coming out and loading my truck, which is a 12 by eight flatbed truck that I got seven years ago. Uh, I've been doing it for 23 years, but this last truck, um, it's, uh, the 12 foot size. I've had 16 footers and all that. No CDL required. They load them, the stacks of pallets on my truck, about 120 of them. I have to strap them down if I'm doing point A to point B. That takes about 15, 17, 18 minutes to get done, right? So I'm not lifting this stuff. I'm 57. I don't lift. I'm not lifting pallets. So I pull out of that business, and the way cities are constructed, three blocks away is the buyer. A lot of guys, three blocks, half mile, mile. So I'm working in a very tight radius. I'm taking those pallets down the road that I got for free, three blocks, driving into the buyer's lot. Their forklift drivers come out and unload them. So let's do the quick math. 120 pallets, seven, eight bucks a piece, 10 bucks a piece, 12, 13 bucks a piece right now. And we'll get into that in a minute as far as cost of, uh, of what you're making. And they unload them. I write out the invoice and do the math. 120 pallets times seven bucks, eight bucks. It's really good money in a 35 minute process. So that's what I've been doing for the last 24 years. The hard work, though, don't forget, is knowing who these businesses are and how to help the businesses and setting it up, up in the correct manner where we're really servicing uh, the supplier and the buyer in the correct manner, not just with pallets, but other items, and then consulting them as well about uh, how to become more efficient in their business. You know, there's safety issues. There's all, a lot of other layers that we can help their business out in and, and tether ourselves to them in a numerous different ways. So we are locked into this reoccurring revenue stream for decades to come. I understand. Well, I th one thing that I thought was really cool about the pallet business when I first came across your information and, you know, you and your channel was that, you know, pallets is just one 
piece of the pie. You know, when you say pallet business, yeah, it's pallets and there's different kind of pallets. But don't you also do things like, you know, for anybody who was, was who's new to this information, like boxes and 55 gallon drums. Can you touch on that a little bit? Yes. It, the pallets are really a gateway to a whole menu of different things that we deal with. And the, the cool thing about it is that let's say you start off as a, they're a pallet customer, a supplier and a buyer. Well, a lot of those suppliers also have what's called dunnage, which is four by eight foot long pieces of lumber that they need to get rid of because it's the byproduct of their business. Corrugated boxes, Gaylord boxes, which are really heavy duty, three ply, uh, big boxes, um, crates, 55 gallon drums. So not only are you getting pallets from that supplier, a lot of times they'll have these other items as well. And that's the trick as well, knowing how to move a lot of this stuff to that, that supplier. So you're locking yourself in where the other guy out there, the scavenger, because there are scavengers out there, but they're going after one size pallet, right? And none of the other stuff and none of the other styles of pallets, which puts them at a disadvantage and us at an advantage. But on the buyer side, the people that are buying from us, so now, you know, they're buying 120, 150 pallets a week from us, but they're also buying 200 corrugated boxes a week from us. And they might be getting 50, 55 gallon drums every two weeks from us. So, and recurring. So it's not like we're having to find deal after deal after deal. Once we have these businesses, one account becomes two and three revenue streams for you. So if you had four accounts, you could have really 12 recurring revenue streams of pallets and crates and dunnage or the next one's crates, uh, Gaylord boxes and 55 gallon drums. And, you know, so just to give you an idea how, how it would work. And that translates into a lot of money because each item you're selling in hundreds, which duplicates yourself in a way to where you are multiplying yourself uh, by how many units you can move of any given item on any given day. I got you. So that it, help? it can be pretty powerful once you start buying, you know, multiple different products from multiple different vendors, especially like when you get locked in, like you said, you become exclusive to them. And like I said, for anybody who is new to this information, be sure to watch this video in full. Check out some of the other videos John and I have done on my channel. And then check over on his page, The Simplest Biz, where he has, you know, probably over 100 videos explaining this business. Do your due diligence. And if you want more information and might want to pursue this, you could book a call to speak with him and his team. So I think this is something we might have probably should have touched on in the beginning. But, you know, when mm -hmm. for, people first hear about this, you know, you know, pallets are, you know, everybody knows what a pallet is. But until you actually hear about this, you could actually look at this as like, wow, I never even noticed it. Or it's, you know, it kind of just went right under my nose. I'm curious, like for anybody, oh, I mean, I know this story, but for anybody who doesn't know, like, how did you actually even get into this? Did you like, what was the story? Because <laughs> if, if, you, if you don't know about the pallet business itself, you could be looking at pallets. And now because I have the eye of it, I always see pallets everywhere. But right. before it, I never right. even noticed. So can you tell everybody just a you know a quick little story about how you actually got into this? Sure. And I've said I've told this um, in different places, and if you've heard it before, so be it. But back in 1998, I was doing remodeling. I had a partner in that business, and a deal fell a, a, a remodeling job fell through, and um, we didn't have anything rest for the rest of the week. Well, he knew about scavenging pallets, meaning we were going, I didn't know what a pallet was back then, you know, I'd seen them, but I didn't know how integral they were as in society or anything like that. So the first place we went to had, I get the number, I can't remember, the first one I believe was 1,500 pallets, and the second place we went to had 2,000 pallets, if I get the numbers right. But the, the, the 1,500 pallets we got, we were going after one size and we were selling to a pallet yard i do not advise anybody to do it that way because you're limiting yourself you're cheating yourself but regardless we did a large volume on those first two days and we were lifting them we don't lift them anymore right uh, you know uh, I, I i haven't lifted pallets in years so i want to make sure you understand that because people think well that sounds dirty and heavy and hard but um the pallet forklift drivers are doing that for us now that being said that's how i tripped into it doing it like a scavenger and then i was 
wanting to find out who are the businesses that actually need them. And the funny thing that happened was Dane, my business partner, the day we were going to go out to find these businesses to try to figure this out, he didn't show up and he never showed up again. He ran off with some girl and I never saw him again. I didn't talk to him for like 10 years. And he it blew his mind that I was still doing the pallet game 10 years later. Yeah. And that was 15 years ago, 14 years ago from now. So it's, we're at the 24 year mark now, but that's how it all started. Did it all wrong back then painted myself in corners that I shouldn't have been painted into really stressful the way I did it way back in the beginning. And it took me years to figure out really how to do this the right way and simplify it and know how to move a lot of different styles of pallets plus all the other stuff as well. So I spent years out in the field trying to perfect it to, to simplify it now. And that's why I call it the simplest biz because um, you don't have to go through that, the pain I had to go through when I first started this. Yeah. So you basically, you know, ins and outs. If someone's trying to learn this, you, you show them, you know, what to say, what to do, how to talk to these buyers, how to talk to these suppliers, everything. In Who they are. Yeah. What, how the deal needs to be constructed, how each deals, you have to walk you through different scenarios, whether it be suppliers and buyers and how they're treated differently because of the situation. So I need to visually show you this out in the field. So you know what to do and what to say and not paint yourself in a corner like I did back in, back in the day. And, and really, just one small example is being able to move a whole variety of pallets from a supplier that has a variety of pallets instead of just trying to get one style like the scavengers do that are trying to settle a pallet yard because that's all the pallet yards deal with is like one style. Well, knowing how to move four or five different styles that they have on their lot and the other guy doesn't, guess what kind of advantage that puts you in? It's, a, it's an incredible advantage, advantage and knowing how to move mixed loads and then having to incorporate the other stuff as well. It's just one kind of sliver of the action. There's a lot of different revenue streams that come under this umbrella, but knowing how to move the quantity and the different styles is, is very important to working this business the right way instead of the wrong way. I got you. Really, it really sounds like, you know, in the more and more I talk to you about this, it's either, you know, you're on two sides of the totem pole. You're at the bottom and you're, you know, playing with everybody else that's at the bottom or you're at the top, you're getting exclusive mm -hmm. access. You're able to buy the different things like the boxes, the wired spools. So it's pretty interesting with the right information, how you could be on one side of the totem pole or on the other side. The next question. And it trans, it, it feel like that translates into freedom. freedom, you know, and that's what we're really all after in our, in our business life or whatever we're trying to pursue a little, uh, you know, we want more freedom in our life and, and learning how to do it, do something, whether it be this or that, or your, your the, the information that you uh, provide in your course, it's important to know the ins and outs the right way to get to that goal, which is more time, more options, more freedom, more money. Awesome. I love it. I want to know, because this is kind of why I wanted to bring you on the channel. The, like I said, the last time we did a video like this, it was, you know, pre-COVID or maybe COVID just started. A lot of people want to know COVID hit. It's been going on, you know, businesses have been tanking. How has this business been affected, if it has been affected at all, by COVID? Is it better? Is it worse? Has there been no difference at all? Um, can you touch on that? Yes. We fall under the category of essential services. So it never shut down during COVID because the world still moves. If you layer on top of that the fact that there was a – there was a, a – steady incline of people ordering stuff online, not just Amazon, just in general, business to business, raw materials, this, that, and the other. And for years, it was just at a steady little pace. COVID hits, and everybody, a lot of people are having to work remote and this, that, and the other. So they that spike in, in orders goes almost straight up. And the amount of time it took four years worth of, of uh, growth was done in four months. So now you have this whole new swath of people and businesses out there working on the internet, ordering their, their materials in massive numbers, which creates a swarm of pallets, right? And, and, and movement of shipments and then shipment, like you see off of Long Beach now with the, everything's backed up. We are at capacity as far as the amount of trucks that are out there. We need more. So that's taking place. It, it blew up is it, the short answer, right? But in t on top of that, you also 
have millions upon millions upon millions of square footage space being created, warehouses being created for this stuff to be moved around. And those, all that warehouse space, that's the brand new warehouse space on top of what's taking place is, um, is another sign of the growth of this particular industry. Lastly, in, in 2020, it was 2 billion pallets in circulation in the United States. Um, the year next, 2021, 2.5 billion pallets. So that's a 500 million pallet increase in one year. So it's massive. It's not going anywhere. And it's how the, how the whole world operates. And if it didn't exist, we'd live in a completely different world. I got you. I got you. That's cool. Um, I know you always talk about some, a different amount of stats. Can you talk about some of the stats, like really how big this business is? I mean, like, I'm not trying to toot the horn, but you know, like you said, pallets are everywhere. Can you talk about some of the stats that actually are behind how many pallets are out there and you know, how massive this actually could be? And just to put on some scale, because sometimes people might see this and say, oh, there's other people doing it. You know, I can't get into it. John's been doing it for 20 years. He's got the game on lock. How big is this on scale? it's it's even bigger you know i've been in this for like 24 years like i was saying and it's even bigger than i even imagined me doing it in my little little cocoon for all those years i started teaching other people how to do it as well you know i'll give you i gave you one stat a minute a minute ago about the quantity of them but you have to also understand 85 percent of all commerce anything that's moved on this planet and I, you know i've done this before but the desk the chair the thread in this 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 chair right here or the cotton that made the thread the ceiling the, the wall tiles the tile whatever you see behind you or behind me or in your where you're sitting those materials at some point were on a pallet being moved from point a to point b so everything that's made on this planet basically is at some point in time on a pallet so 85 percent of all commerce has moved on it so that's massive right think about every truck you see on the road Every uh, tanker you see over those uh, ships outside of Long Beach, California, full of pallets. Everything's moved on pallets. So you got that aspect of it. The second thing is lumber. Okay. So when I thought I heard this said, it blew my mind because 65% of all lumber, so all trees that are processed on a yearly basis, are used to either build pallets or repair pallets. Wow. You know, in your mind, you think, no, buildings and fences and houses, pallets. So that, again, translates into the amount of the huge amount that uh, is uh, of wood that is used just to even create this stuff. And I guess in a way we're helping society because we're recycling, you know, mm -hmm. we're doing lightly used stuff as well. So I think those two aspects right there kind of give you an idea. And I want to tell you the people that watch this. Over the next couple of days, just like it happened to Felix and people that I talked to, over the next few days, keep your eyes open yeah. and think about pallets because everywhere you go now, they're going to start popping up where they were there the whole time. You yeah. just never noticed them. Yeah. And that will also cement in your mind, oh my God, how big this is. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Most def I think that's kind of the coolest part because before I knew this information and learned about this, I never even noticed them. And now I seem, I seem to see them everywhere. Um, another right. question I want to ask you to see your opinion about this, because a lot of people watch my channel to see, you know, if this is a good side hustle. And like I said, I post videos about all different types of side hustles and businesses yeah. people can get into. But in your opinion, who is this business or side hustle or income stream good for? What kind of person is it? You know, someone who works a corporate job? Is it good for someone who's maybe just graduated college? Anybody in particular or can it fit all ranges of people? It really fits a wide swath, young, old woman, man or woman. Um, it, 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 professional white collar or blue collar. I have financial planners. I have nurses. I have, you know, I think the, the white collar end of it is they're being People are ground up in their cubicle. They're they're being worked to death by a corporation, mm -hmm. and they want something of their own. And they don't, but they don't want to have the massive learning curve that it would take to maybe do something on the web, right? Mm -hmm. Which it does take a, a lot of effort to do these types of things. And Felix can attest to that, and I have to attest to it now because I have to deal on the web like we're doing at this moment. 
And that's a lot harder than the pallet game. But you also have blue collar and salt of the earth as well. And and it's not so complicated where it's going to take you tons and times of learning curve to, to get this, you know, to, to learn this knowledge. You need to know it. But at the same time, it's not going to take months and months of, of trying to master some algorithm, yeah. so to speak. You Ads, know I mean? websites, uh, all that stuff. You don't got to master the whole Yeah, that traffic stuff. and, 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 and chain, then all the, the tools that come along with it when you're dealing with the internet. It's nuts, right? Um, but that being said, I think it's for the people that also, let's say you are on the web and you're doing an internet-based type of thing as well. Think about this. It takes a long time to build a business when it, on the web or whatever business you, you've been trying to pursue, and, and you're trying to piece it together piece by piece by piece. But one, you don't have the time that you need to really devote to it. Two, you don't have the, the most important thing is the cash flow mm-hmm. to pursue something else as well. So whether it be Felix's course or my course, this particular one allows you to make a lot of money in a short time frame on any given day because we're trading units for money not time for money Mm -hmm. right so then that frees up your time to actually if you want or choose to build out something else because you have the time freedom and the money freedom to do that Mm -hmm. i think that's very important i've done that with you know i have another side business outside the pallets as well that this gave me time to do heck for years i sent sat there and recorded music and, and wrote music for nine nine thirty in the morning until nine ten o'clock at night, you know, because that's what I love to do, and I didn't feel guilty about it. So that's there. I think that's so important to have a vehicle like that. And and so anybody who's wanting that type of new freedom is willing to hustle in the beginning, but have that payoff in the end to free them up to either spend more time with their family or to operate another business or just blow it off. To the point where you know I have students making a half a million a month, or you know, doing this business alone. So mm-hmm. you have options. So it's pretty much good for all types of people, young, old, all demographics, all parts of the country. And then I've seen things that John said in another video he'd done, not only in you know all parts of the country, but all parts of the world. I mean, don't you have students in like ten or thirteen, ten or twelve countries or something like that? Fourteen now. Fourteen. Fourteen countries, and maybe fifteen. If I, I, I got to check because. Somebody came in from New Zealand a few days ago, and I can't remember if I had somebody there. But yes, it's the whole the whole world is is operates this. This is no different here than it is Canada. No different from here than it is, you know, in Mexico or it, it's South America, Africa. This is how the whole world's moved. Mm-hmm. So these opportunities for this particular business is the same here as it would be in Europe, as an example. It's all moved by this stuff. Maybe the styles are slightly different and that type of thing, but we're covering that in the training. So, um, But the overall concept is exactly the same. They have the same issues and the same problems for suppliers and buyers in other countries as they have here. And that was really cool to see because, you know, in my mind, I never really thought outside the box. But as this expanded, um, yeah, having students operating in different countries is a really cool thing. Awesome. So if you're watching this and you maybe you're in Canada or South America or Europe, you're it's fair game to everybody. So I'm glad we touched on, you know, who this is for. I was going to ask you, how does this compare to other things? But I think we kind of touched on that in the last question, because it's like you don't need. Websites. I do want to say I do want to say one thing on that to just give you people a little clarity. Somebody told me, John, you know what you are, at least at this point in the business, when you set it up, he said you're an Uber driver for pallets. Mm. I go, well, what do you mean? And he said, well, you're picking up 120 passengers, pallets, in, the, in your back seat, basically. Yeah. And they're each paying you seven, eight, nine dollars a piece. Yep. And you're driving them three blocks down the road and dropping them off. <laughs> yeah. But next week, the whole new group of 120 people will be there, or pallets, that you're picking up and delivering three blocks, four blocks down the road. And the funny thing he said is, and they don't throw up in your back seat at three o'clock in the morning, <laughs> yeah. you know, because apparently he, he was an Uber driver and yeah. had that happen. So that's a, just to give you folks an idea of what the end result of learning this business becomes, because it does come very simple in the end if you learn your stuff in the beginning. Now, is this something that you can automate? Because a lot of people, they watch my videos and they say, hey, I already work a full-time job. I could maybe dedicate it a couple hours a week, 
but I can't dedicate right away. Is, or maybe they don't want to and they want to keep their job. Is this something that I know you have a, like a story you can kind of touch on with that. But can this be automated where you can kind of, you know, step back and, you know, kind of let the money roll in? Well, here's the perfect. There's two examples that come to there's there's brokering one, which I'll get brokering, which I'll get into a second. But me, my wife wanted to move to South Alabama. I have the ballot business up in Birmingham, right? Mm -hmm. I didn't want to leave those accounts. I really didn't want to sell it. Create a great relationship with those folks. So I had a a friend of mine who was doing Fridays for me all these years, and uh, and I was doing the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Well, we moved. Now he does all the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday for me, and I pay him a cut. So I have that business operating hands off. You know, the orders still come into me and all that, but as far as me going point A to point B, I am still making revenue up there. And then down in Mobile area, I'm starting some uh, business down here as well. Now I'm not going to blow it up as big as I did up in Birmingham because I have the responsibility of teaching students as well. So I have to balance my life now. But so that's one way of passivity um, is building it out and have somebody else actually operate it. The second part is doing brokering where you're setting the deals up, but you are not delivering the pallets. You are the middleman for the, the deal, right? So you, you set, I'll show you how to set the deal up in the training where you're making passive income on uh, large quantities of pallets and getting a cut of that action day after day, week after week after week. And you set multitudes of deals up anywhere in the country, anywhere in the world, in fact, and be part of the, the money stream that, that uh, reoccurs with it. Mm, okay, awesome. Another thing I think we kind of missed, I just have a question right here, is, you know, besides the training, and like I said, anybody who might be interested in the Simplest Biz training, check out John's page or check the links down in the description below. But how much would you recommend is needed? I know you can start with less but if, you know, ballpark, I mean, people are for starting a franchise or maybe starting another business out here, you need, you know, tens of, you know, thousands of dollars, if not hundreds. How much oh, do you okay. recommend to start with this? You know, how much should be, should you budget to start this business up? Yeah, well, outside of the cost, of, there's the cost of the training, of course. But outside of that, the actual business itself, the way I would do it, if I was doing it again, and I, let's say I didn't have a truck, I would have a, about a $60 in expenditures for straps and cranks just to have some extras right? the things that hold the pallet to the truck mm -hmm. so that's like a that in an invoice book and a pen <laughs> basically yeah. maybe every once in a while i have a hammer if it boards up and i'll pop it and it made me eight bucks by taking five seconds to pop a nail down absolutely i'll do that as well so i hammer right so you're talking about 60 65 bucks right there yeah now don't i don't say go out and buy your own truck one, you could borrow one if you needed to from somebody who has a trailer or something um, if you had something to pull it. Or what I would do really is I would line all my orders up on one day of the week to start with once you know what to do. And I would uh, rent a truck on that Tuesday as an example mm -hmm. and move 300 pallets on that Tuesday to start out. Mm -hmm. And that's going to generate me at a 7 buck pop. That's 2100 bucks, And I'm going to pay out for that daily rental of a flatbed truck 130, 150 bucks, depending on what part of the country you live in. Mm -hmm. So at 2100, 2000, 1800, I don't care. It's still all good profit. And you subtract that at 150. They order again the next week. You repeat that process. Let the business that you've learned buy that foot, you know, that truck for you, which you can get an older flatbed or a pickup in a trailer, old beat up pickup in a trailer. But my flatbed was thirty six hundred bucks, yeah, and it works like a champ. I got it seven years ago, twelve foot long, eight foot wide, mm -hmm. no CDL. Okay, cool. And then to wrap this video up, because we've been going for about twenty five minutes, can you explain to anybody who um, doesn't know what the course kind of entails, what it's in, what's included with it, and then besides that, okay. how they can get in touch with you, how they can follow you, and everything like that. Well, Felix, I told you to reel me in if I started going off, you know, tell me that. but <laughs> yeah. anyway, we're at the 20 minute mark. Um, the, the training course is 14 modules long. So I put it, I went out in the field for four months, recorded every aspect of this business. I got to walk you through all the different scenarios of who these businesses are, massive suppliers list, massive buyers list, spreadsheet, keep track of what's where, a lot of other uh, scripts if you were doing this over the phone. I have a file cabinet on top of the actual 
modules that you're going through. But I'm walking you day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, as you're going through the process, how to scout from home, you know, how to talk to these businesses, who you need to talk to, what you need to say, which questions you need to ask and what answers you need to have based on the way they answer. So the only way I could deliver that is take you out in the field so you can see what I see and do what I do and say what I say. So that's the main course. And it's even running to the backside of the business. There's nothing. It's the encyclopedia of, of talents, you know? Um, so I, I, I cover everything under the sun that I've learned over the last 24 years. That being said, there is a private Facebook group that goes along with the training that we put you into. And you're able to associate with other students that are doing this business as well. And you're able to learn from them and they're posting their items in there as well. They're posting their materials that they use. So you have this massive database on top of the training. And in addition, I've been in there over a hundred and something times and done a hundred and I think it's 110, 20 additional videos, flushing the information out even more where you can have that as a go-to reference to be able to help and support you as you do this business or do business with other students, which happens every hour of the day, mm -hmm. huge deals happening every hour of the day. And they're sharing actually their negotiation skills on video for you to share as well. I mean, to, to learn from in addition to the course, huge, super important to have as part of the training aid, but very proud of it. And I, I just want to help as many people as I can do this business. Um, and get some of their freedom back because I've been getting away with it for a while. Okay, awesome. Well, I appreciate you having and joining me on the channel. And like I said, just I don't know if you touched on it. If they want to learn more, they can go to your channel. They can check the link so, in the description. I got a new link for you, Felix. Easy to remember. Thepalletcourse.com. And they can go there and book a call if they're interested. Book a call. Absolutely. In fact, there's a button on there. They can... If you don't even want to go through that process, you can just click the button and, and uh, either I am going to answer, one of my students are going to answer, because I have some volunteers to actually help me take some of these calls. But yeah, you know, check it out further though. Don't just don't just look at this video. Do some research and due diligence. I want good students and I want people to understand it. So do a little research. Make sure this is for you. But I think if you keep on digging, you think you, I think a little light bulb is going to go off in your head um, if you truly grasp it but it's not for everybody as well so that, that that's to be said as well awesome well thank you john for joining me on the channel like i said i'll put his information in the description below again thank you guys for watching be sure to hit a thumbs up on the video and we'll see you in the next one thanks felix